Let's turn our attention now to another memory of our past that should not be lost. In the late 1700s, the white settlers in South Africa forced slaves to carry identity books so they could control their movement. In some way or other, passbooks had existed since then. But when the National Party came to power in 1948 and formalized the ideology of apartheid, they needed more efficient instruments to separate races and enforce white rule. The Dompas was born. It ruled the lives of millions of black adults until 1986. It was the greatest single human rights violation in our past. Mrs. Gurry decides, however, to check up on something else. That is, whether her servant has his reference book and if his service contract is in order. Nothing missing, <laughs> except one tooth. But with or without teeth, photographs are taken at the offices of the Department of Native Affairs, where these workers are registered and assisted in finding work in urban areas. Daily, a large number turns up here for reference books. Each book contains the photograph of the owner, his name, race, and particulars of employment. Naturally, the officials who are employed here must have a thorough knowledge of Bantu customs and languages. Ah, he's just received his reference book. Kaffer, where's your pass? If I think about that, I think my heart inside and my brains is like water boiling. And now was trying to make the people refugees of South Africa. Sorry to say it, but when I try to think about us, I want to cry. Reference book, passbook, dompas, stinker. Different names for the same thing. The hated document that determined the life of every black South African for decades. Where they could sleep, live, work, visit, and for how long. The main aim of the pass laws was to control the movement of black South Africans to the cities. The idea was to allow just enough black people into the cities to satisfy labor requirements. Anyone wanting to live and work in a city needed a permit. Without one, it was illegal to stay there for longer than 72 hours. Before you can have a permit to be in Cape Town, you must be here in Cape Town for the last 15 years and work for one employer for 10 years <clears throat> or be 15 years in the area. So the number of people who could qualify to have a pass that entitled them to be in the urban areas were limited, very strictly limited. Pass laws denied black South Africans the right of citizenship. They were aliens in their own country. Pass law arrests gave millions of South Africans a criminal record. Criminals for simply not having a valid pass to be in a certain place at a certain time in the country of their birth. Black South Africans were hunted, harassed, fined, imprisoned, and ultimately deported to so-called ethnic homelands. Carrying a pass became a way of life, having a valid permit a means of survival. They used to come to our houses, knocking at the door, whether you are naked or what. They just knock on the door and walk in. There was no privacy anymore. Your house was just their house. If you go out here, go to the cafe here next door, and you meet up with a what's called bad body inspector. And then the only thing that he's going to say, Yong Komi, pass your pass. 
No, I've left it here at the, at the uh, here at work or here at home. Come, 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 come. Then they take you to the court. Uh, when they see, even a bar, at a bus stop, when they see a black people in a queue, they quickly surround them, arrest them. Those who have got no passes. Everywhere, even going to church, to church. On Sunday, Gordon said, they stop, they stop them from going to church. They ask your pass. If you leave your pass, you are going to be arrested. Your going to church will be nothing to the police. You are going to be locked up. Gandhi, they busy collecting us. They want to arrest us. So from 1976, early in the morning, they came with big lorries. They say, you are not allowed to be here because this is our country, go to back to Transkai. We say, no, 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 we can't. They take us by, by the big lorries, send it to the uh, trains. Trains that day were seven. In, in Juba, it was very worse because uh, mostly people that was arrested, anyhow, anytime, trespasses, get in the houses, hotels, the police go inside of the houses, or the flies, they search all these people in order that they know where you sleep, where you come from, what's your, uh, your boss, what he's doing, and so forth. The boss was trying to write to, to phone to Transkai and to those townships. They say you are coming to bring your families who are here because they are not allowed to be here. So also myself, I phoned to my father. I say, yeah, you mustn't say I'm your child. I'm a child of South Africa. I'm a child of South Africa, not yours, because I'm fighting for the past laws. If you are 18 years of age, they see you. Where's your pass? Uh, it's in the house there. I'm going to. No, you are going to. You are supposed to carry your pass with you. They lock you and go. You are going to pay the fine in the police station. It was not something which you allowed to live with. You must carry your pass. And your name was Kafa. And you accepted it. In Johannesburg, anyone who carried a pass would have had to visit the hated pass law office at 80 Albert Street. Here, naked men would have to wait in queues for a medical examination before the passes would be endorsed. Part of this fitness examination was a public inspection of the penis. That was a rubbish place, I want to tell you, that because the mostly people that have been taken there, having a queue, and they go naked without no trousers sometimes, they already check at you, how you healthy and so forth but that is another worst story because you have to queue two to three lines until you are your reference book get ready and then therefore if they find that you are not qualified in the area they give you a stem for 72 hours and you must move in Johannesburg. in the 50s women were suddenly also required to carry a pass and had to qualify for permits in their own right they were no longer seen as part of their husband's household. It was the worst of it, where people is not allowed to stay with his wife. But they said in the, when they are married that you will be separated by death, but they are separated by the police. The millions of people arrested for pass law offences passed through special commissioners' courts presided over by so-called Bantu or native commissioners. The sentences varied from fines to floggings. Usually offenders were endorsed out, meaning they had 72 hours to leave the area. In 30 minutes time, 15, 15 people are already sentenced. You just come. Why? What do you want? Why do you come to uh, this area without a permit, as if you can be given a permit if you are, we want to? But throughout the time of the past laws,
there was always fierce resistance. It reached a peak in the defiance campaign of 1952 when people deliberately destroyed their passes and when a huge protest march of women took place to the Union buildings in Pretoria. In the 60s, it was again an anti-pass law campaign that led to the shooting of 69 people at Sharpville and three at Langa in Cape Town. By the 80s, the arrests were not stopping, but the law was cracking under the strain. It was becoming too expensive to implement a law that people were defying more and more openly. In 1986, P.W. Boerter repealed all pass and influx control laws. The tyranny of the Dompas had finally come to an end.